My name is Wisdom um, Kwame Bebli. I'm from Ghana. And because the LGBT community in Ghana is very vulnerable, I diverted my specific human rights defending into the human rights of LGBTIQ people. My work started through uh, around health intervention programs. People did not know how to assess healthcare services in terms of their sexuality and also their sexual behavior. And if I'm able to bring this to them, then it means that I'm going to be saving life. And this is where it all started for, for me. Human rights in general in Ghana is when you are, a typical example is when you are working for, I mean, human rights that everybody knows that is human rights, it is accepted. But when you are a, an LGBT human rights defender, then you have, a, you, have an, you have an issue. And so the environment is hostile, it's risky, it's dangerous to you, the individual, to you, to, to your family, to your friends that you have around you, and to people that uh, engage you. And so be, you will be tagged in a certain way that you can't be able to work comfortably, move around comfortably, because you, you get people moving away from you just because you have been, you are tagged. It takes a lot of strength and courage to be an LGBT human rights defender. I get my strength from people calling me and telling me about how uh, engaging with them help them also about solving their their situations most especially uh, when people are attacked there are many obstacles faced by lgbtiq human rights defenders i mean you can't operate as a lgbt rights organization you can't um, register your organization with the full name that you have chosen for your organization. And also LGBT human rights organizations cannot fully operate and openly operate uh, in, in wherever their office is situated or even in the country. They always have to work on the law and not expose the endanger themselves and the community in the work they do. In Ghana, before, if anybody gets physical with you and they attack you, before people will come to your help, they will either scream that you are gay or you are uh, LGBT activists who support gay people, and then the people around will attack you more. And sometimes, even, you even go to the police report, the case is rather turned against you because, they, because of the, um, the name calling of you being gay. Immediately they hear gay, then it means, look, this is illegal in Ghana. We've seen some form of improvement with our advocacy that we are doing in terms of engaging allies, such as the police, in terms of address, how to address issues of violence and attack of people, human rights, and not the perceived sexuality of people that they hear them to come when they come to the police station to report about issues or rob of robbery or blackmail. So we've done some form of advocacy and engagement with this police. Uh, some of them are understanding the issues and helping out. We've done a lot of engagement with um, health uh, healthcare services. We've done a lot of engagement with some agencies that supports our work. And most especially, we've done work with SHRAJ, the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. They, I mean, we work closely with them in terms of seeking justice for the community when there is also violence. Ghana is signed on to the UN treaties and all of that. We had a meeting, like some activists in Ghana, and then we had a meeting, online meeting, to discuss some of the mandates, how the UN can help. Then the Office of the Human Rights also helped in engaging the African Commission also to release a statement. And so we thought that uh, for the first time, it is okay that we hear the various human rights commissions release statements on issues of LGBTIQ in Ghana, which would catch the attention of the government agencies to know that the LGBTI community is not in this alone, but the international community is also on the lookout for the human rights of people, regardless of their gender, regardless of their sexuality. The Family Values Bill 
has impacted the LGBTQ community positively and negatively. Positively, we've seen a lot of academians, professionals who have come against the bill and who are speaking against the bill. I mean, we've seen mainstream human rights organizations coming together to fight against the bill, which we have not seen in a very long time since our advocacy or human rights uh, work in Ghana for LGBTIQ people. That we applaud very well because I mean, it's not easy to see mainstream people, uh, human rights organization against um, LGBTIQ bill that has been presented in Parliament. Negatively, there is because uh, there is a lot of violence and attack just because of the introduction of the bill and then it has been discussed and debated in, in the country. The lay people are attacking community members and they are violating their rights. There are a lot of videos on social media that you can find that is, you see that you will see a lot of attacks on various LGBTIQ people in the various regions of Ghana where you see people are attacked just because they are perceived to be LGBTIQ people or gay people because of the introduction of the bill and because our leaders are talking and are fuming hate against, uh, against LGBTIQ people. So people feel that they can take laws into their own hands and do anything immediately they hear you are gay. I mean, meanwhile, they are not educated about what really the law says about um, and, and when, even when you arrest somebody to be gay, what you should do. I mean, lots of lay Ghanaians do not know what to do. All they know is attack. LGBT persons in Ghana are not fighting for any right but their human rights. The liberty to be able to move freely, the liberty to be able to express freely, the liberty to be able to work freely in Ghana. That is what I want my fellow Ghanaians to know what LGBTIQ people in Ghanaians need from them. I believe that one day, even if not me, my next generation to come, the work that I will do, and then my next generation comes to continue, will one day see light at the end of the tunnel, where we will see freedom of uh, freedom and liberty for LGB, human rights of LGBTIQ people in Ghana. I will not be alive to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but to see people continue the work where we've left off and the work that we have done continue in is is one of the things that I'll be happy about.